Good afternoon, gentlemen. Good afternoon. What would you like to talk to us about today? Well, uh, I, I've never met Andy till uh, Christmas Eve. Neither had Last I. year. Nobody had. But uh, Andy is one of the um, invisible homeless because we've had a lot of problems with attitude towards um, the services of the council. They cannot actually cope with some things they're doing. They're relying on a lot of other people, charity, uh, people like the cafe next door, helping, feeding people. Because we have got some money issues now in Nottingham. But uh, the point was is uh, there are genuinely homeless people in Nottingham. The numbers they'll say about living rough on the streets Nottingham City Council insisted there were only nine people and they were well catered for. Well, the way that these people are catered for has now been highlighted. While the council is still under the impression they have been protest and treating people as protesters, the nicest thing I can say is in the background, they couldn't really treat people as protesters if they were genuinely homeless. So they have been homing the, um, the radical protesters rather than the homeless. I think actually they were genuinely homeless. So there is an attitude to realising there are some problems, but it's the attitude of the council to make sure that nobody understands what the shortfalls are. They are wonderful, they are brilliant, and they are doing good work. But if you're actually in their faces with a problem and issue that they don't want you to see, they can act in a very, very aggressive way, which is inappropriate. But I'm, I'm here with Andy, and it's on Christmas Eve, um, uh, a group uh, known as... Uh, op safe and also they had uh should we say a lot of input physical input by a group called pirate sec now um there's lots of issues when people think that this is political the only issue was at that point is there are homeless people all over the country who are hiding away from the resources because the resources do not fit properly they have so many problems that don't quite fit the criteria it's easy if they're called protesters and political adjutants, that's a good word, adjutants, um, rather than these people have issues to solve. Uh, Andy turned up actually on Christmas Eve. Uh, there's been a lot of footage shot of this and it will take quite a lot of time to put together, wanting literally just somewhere safe at that point in, in time because he had nowhere else to stay. Now, Andy's not even a single man. So we had issues there with um, his wife as well. Um, apparently didn't have any ties to Nottingham, his wife, so they were at one point looking towards housing Andrew, but as they a free man, his wife excuse, excuse me doctor, as a free man you can live where you want, can't you, on this island? You, you can, but the thing is the resources that we actually need, the attitude is that we are coping and the council is giving the illusion of a lot of authority and power. With authority and power it's comes, respons public servants, aren't they? comes responsibility. Um, the who, who did they send down when you set up the uh, when people set up camp outside here? Yeah. It is actually a gentleman who has several titles: anti-social behaviour officer. Oh, so they don't send a housing officer to ask uh, whether you'd like some nice new houses? No, it, it was embarrassing to see these people appear in a beautiful area that is still having 1.5 million spent on it to make it look beautiful. You don't need to access the station, but there's an area outside of my shop just like Market Square, and uh, what happened at that point? is Andrew was informed that if they needed somewhere they would film with school over Christmas. Remember, we're not giving up our home. We're actually just trying to actually keep somebody safe on the lowest level they've actually come to with having no home at all. So tents were popped, food was being supplied, and cameras were put up to make sure they were safe. This was policed and made sure that people were safe there, including when Michelle appeared on site, uh, acting correctly and professionally. We even had what I would call a female officer in um, situ as well, in case there were any issues and problems and uh, they could be dealt with. But uh, Andrew has actually found a house. Yeah, I was, I was the first one on site um, and I was the first one to be housed. It oh, that's pretty good news, is. Andrew, yeah. What about your wife? Because they wanted her to go to yeah, the Yeah, I mean, at, at one time, I mean, before the campsite got set up, they told me to go to Housing Aid. And I went to Housing Aid. Now they turned around to me and said that they could house me in London Road Hospital. But they wanted, to, they wanted to send Michelle back to Derby. Now, when I first met Michelle, I met her at Christmas show, and I took her away from Derby because she was verbally and physically abused by her ex-partner. So I took her away from that, but they wanted to send her back into that situation again. That's not and she was good, crying, and she worked very good. She, she didn't like it, she didn't want to go. So what I can't get is that they, uh, they like to send anti-social behaviour people 
in a sense it's actually it's protecting what you really their need. reputation because I don't know if people realise there have been some other issues with Nottingham City Council and the same anti-social behaviour officer and trading standards he calls himself as well is usually sent to the forefront then where nobody else can deal with the issue. In other words, we're pointing things out which are a problem and the council doesn't want to address them, how they're dealing with them. So they usually send this gentleman called Richard Ang and unfortunately he's not the best person to send shall we call it when there's a political problem, as the, the aggression of the council, if you actually believe that the council would act in a way that this man has done towards, this man wasn't homeless, he's a protester. And we were told very clearly, there is lots of footage, these are all protesters, there are no homeless people in Nottingham. And he was the first. But on the television they all said that it, it wasn't a protest. It wasn't a protest. It wasn't a protest. Well, that's after we had several phone calls from the BBC asking about the protest, and we were asking who's informed them that this is a protest because these are homeless people. You can't bring me like that. At the Didn't same the, time. Uh, the local communist protection? Oh, see, uh, sorry, yeah, community protection. I think I got it right the first time. <laughs> hmm? uh, didn't they actually tell uh, tell the taxi drivers the? Uh, Right, the hackney carriages. This so is the actually, bit. Paul, this is the, the bit. Paved, uh, yeah, you might not believe it. What, what he's trying to say, and I'm talking over him to say, don't say that they actually threatened people with a motor vehicle. But where the uh, camp had actually grown, because there was more than two people homeless, within the next couple of days, there were quite a few people outside. Very embarrassing situation. So over the bank holiday, a rich still hasn't given the name of the person because he said it was a different person to him. Um, Highways decided that the road should be opened over the period was closed and the road though it had been completely cleared as an open space on that same day had a skid chicane of several barriers put up to make sure no vehicles could go in a straight line and uh, then the taxi rank which they've been telling the taxis which is not correct because they've never looked at the consultation that they will never be allowed back on the street. At this point here, the best way to intimidate and scare people, well that isn't really what the council do, it should house them and find out what the problems was, was to order 400 taxis under threat of their licence to rank up on Station Street where the tents were. But also, the road had suddenly become <coughs> unsafe to go in a straight line, so the taxis had to sort of zigzag through a, um, a, a skid chicane which meant that they had to pass not dangerously close to the tents, but at one point they had to stop because there isn't enough room. They would have actually run over the tents. Taxi drivers were unaware of the situation, of what was going on. They simply received a message from Mr. Ang on the bank holiday. Um, so and, of course how did they get that message? He, he can't remember who actually called or anybody like that would, would not order. I mean, it's, it's dangerous. There's tents and things there to well, drive on taxis. Well, I can't believe this. The actual taxis. taxi drivers followed this. It's like, oh, jump off a cliff. Right. Okay. Yeah. Taxi drivers, really? if ordered by the taxi licensing officer, which was there, ordered them to rank up. And if they don't do as they're told, it's a breach of their agreement. When the first six taxis arrived, I was speaking with, uh, well, not all of them, but one in particular was saying he was so shocked because he couldn't understand why we've been sent up along the street where we'll never be allowed to go again. And maybe it was to pick up a disabled passenger. Six cars arrived on the street, nearly running over the tents. They were then bottlenecked because the end of the road had been closed by another policy. And they were then trapped and in theory 400 taxis ordered outside Zero's barbershop were going to have to drive over the tents. Good, they had lots of officers there to make sure everything was safe. They stood with their backs against the wall to make sure nobody reacted to the taxis. As I say, being used, and I've spoken with police, if you use a motor vehicle to intimidate somebody, it could be classed as a criminal act. It could be. It could even be a lethal weapon. <coughs> but when you have the authority to order 400 cars and there are no homeless people, just protesters, quote, unquote, then this is... It isn't a suitable attitude, even that's the truth. But uh, as I say, on the background, while the council has been being very aggressive to staff its authority, they've been taught a few lessons about what is the correct way to do things, what core procedures are, and how it's not necessary to lie to general public. If you are lying, there's obviously an issue that we have to deal with. So um, getting each one, and I believe, and I'm going to have to confer with somebody who's had a lot more to do with uh, looking after the camp and the homeless. Um, how many people has this operation ended up bringing to light and getting housed? This, how shall I address you, sir? Another name is Smurf.
So you can take a seat over here. This gentleman gave up the entire Christmas period to make sure that everything was running smoothly. If people had problems or issues, they could be dealt with. The same problems and issues that is funded by the council, but it's very limited. So they cannot do the things that this man and his organisation had done to keep the people safe at the uh, Christmas period. And we even had a tornado rip down this street. And again, it's looking after people, but how many people have been housed? We've currently got 20 people housed over a three week period. Because the, two, the first two weeks, we go about five weeks now. Mm -hmm. The first two weeks, obviously, with bank colleges, New Year coming in. The council, as well as outreach and home, home in aid, um, they weren't doing much. I think Adam, you got housed just after New Year, wasn't it? Yeah, it's supposed to be the outreach. Yeah. yeah, I went to Hours and Eight, but they wanted to house me. They housed me in Nottingham, but sent Michelle back to Derby, where I took her out of violent relationship. No, that's mm -hmm. stupid. It's not good. It's not. It's now you say they, they they haven't done a lot. Is it constraints that they can't be bothered, or is it cases? No, I don't think. I, mean, they, they, I don't think they've been bothered. I mean, I had the heart attack just on, just on great week ago. When I first went down to Hours and Eight, when that Richard, mm -hmm. and you know, when I had the interview it, yes, and they told me to go down. I went down, and they turned around and said then. We'll house you, but have you got proof that you've had your heart attack? So I pulled my spray out, put it on there, put my aspirin. They said, we still need a letter of confirmation from the doctor that you've suffered heart attack. And then we'll consider you for housing. I'm just having a heart attack now. Because this seems like it's turning into totalitarian dictatorship. Well, how long did it take you to get that piece of paper from the day they asked for it to the day they... The doctor was, was going to do it, but then good fortune, a housing eight, um, yeah. outreach come through and said we've got a private landlord that you want to see, so I got a place through there, Marvelous. so I didn't need the land, yeah. you know what I mean, but for housing eight to turn around and say that they wanted proof that I had a heart attack, I put my aspirin, my tablets, my spray on, that's not good enough, they wanted the letter to prove. Do you think you would have got somewhere to live if it hadn't been for what we've done out here? No, it'd have been hard, mm. it'd have been hard. Mm. How, how did it actually feel? I mean, literally coming down because they say, we only just met at Christmas and they mm. say, I, I discovered so many people who were hiding away and I'm not mm. being rude, but it sounds like you hid away from your own safety. Mm. So, um, have you had any bad issues happen while you've been there? I've got to call it living rough because that's exactly Well, yeah, I mean, uh, more or less when we first come, because I went to Dot, born and bred in Nottingham, and I, I was away from Nottingham for more than four years. When I come back on my own, I had an eight turn around and say, because I've got a mum lives in Clifton, sister lives in Aspen, sister lives in Chilwell, so I've got my local connection. But because I was away from Nottingham for more than four years, the council will turn around and say, because you've been away for more than four years, you've got no local connection. Right. So you have to be like Joe Blogs, you have to sign the bottom of the register. That's what they said to me, as not it? One planet, one people, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, but then when I met Michelle and I brought her back from Derby, got right out of that relationship, we had a tent on the uh, canal down near um, the waterfront bar. Yes. Yeah, and we had a tent and we, we left it up and we left it up for like nine days and we used to leave it there and nobody touched it. On the tenth day, we've gone into town because I've gone to try and do, make a bit of money and get some food and that, you know what I mean? Come back, everybody's here trying to chuck water on. Some day, we've gone along so far to it. Debt Free TV, in association with getoutofdebtfree.org.